If I've not done so already, please pull out the communication card that's in front of you in the pew and put your name on it and let us know you worship with us by putting it beside you in the pew so it can be picked up afterwards after worship this morning. Congregational meeting is scheduled for Sunday, October the 30th, immediately following worship. Uh, budgets for this meeting for 2023 are in the back if you would like to pick them up. We're going to be voting on the budget and also elections for 2023. And that's coming up on the last Sunday this month. So October 30th, which is in a few weeks, will be our election and budget meeting, which will be right after worship on the 30th of October. If you're interested in serving the church, or your opportunities for, that are available, uh, secretary, trustee, uh, usher chairperson, fellowship chairperson, and held elder, held elder are all needed. So if you have a feeling, if you'd like to do something like this or have some kind of a thought that you might possibly take it prayerfully in consideration, please notify George Weed or the church office and let us know so we can get in touch with you and also we can get you to serve in our church here at Trinity. Just to let you know, Mission Festival is scheduled for November the 6th. Uh, our guest speaker for that, you want to know who that is? I don't know if you know this guy or not. The guy who is our guest speaker for November the 6th is a Pastor Dale Leland. You know him? He is your guest speaker. He is a former pastor here at Trinity, but he is our guest speaker here on November the 6th. Also want to let you know that church council meets tomorrow at 6.30, and I believe we'll be meeting upstairs in the conference room. And also just to let you know as well, on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock, uh, LWML here at Trinity will meet, meet in the glass room. Uh, with that being said, I believe that's all the announcements that I have, unless anybody else has announcements. Let us begin our worship with the prelude.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Because of the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father will not hold our sins against us, but offers forgiveness, life, and salvation to all who call on Him for mercy and grace. Let us then confess our sins to Him in confident faith. Gracious God, You have known us before we were born, and since coming to faith, we have known your amazing grace. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For Jesus' sake, turn us from selfish ways to walk in paths pleasing to you. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, he gave his Son to live as one of us and to die for us. As surely as Jesus was born with Moabite Ruth in his human family tree, as certainly as the Samaritan leper was saved through the faith, and as confidently as Paul assured Timothy of the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us always to recognize your goodness, give thanks for your compassion, and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the feast of victory 
The Old Testament reading for today is in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of the two sons were Malon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite women wives. The name of the one was Orpha and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years and both Malon and Chilion died, so that the women were left without the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters in law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughter-in-laws, and they were on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. So she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceeding bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and went again. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. When you die, I will die. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. You then, my child, 
be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And with what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may I obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? 
Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. At this time, I'd like to invite all the children up for a special message for them. Actually, I need the kids to turn around and look this way. We're doing different today. Okay? And what are you, what's this all about? Good morning. Um, most of you already know we've sent out a reminder um, through our phone tree that this October is uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. Today specifically is Pastor Appreciation Day. So I want to thank everybody who attended the, the last minute breakfast and helped put that together this morning. Um, Pastor was definitely surprised as we kept it from him completely. So um, during Sunday school today, we also had all of the children participate in a thank you to Pastor. Um, that's what I'm presenting this morning, but I also want to make you all aware that the kids did make their own crafts that will eventually um, be hung on the glass wall out there um, in the narthex for everybody to see next week. So for today, I just want to present this to Pastor, and I'm going to read this so you all know what it says. It says, a pastor devoted to giving so much, God only knows all the souls that you've touched. Committed to serve when you answered God's call, you prove it by being a servant to all. Thank you, your children of Jesus. And this is their fingerprint from Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, what? Do what? It's a tree? Do you realize I will, I will keep this? I got to find a place to put this. You know, it was back, now this, this shows my age. When I first got into the pastoral ministry, it was in the year of 1994. No, you weren't even born yet, were you? That's been what? 20 some odd years ago, 28 years ago, right? I, I can't keep my day straight. But when I first got to my first parish, they actually, the kids there actually drew, there was a big old huge long roll of paper, and they drew a whole bunch of things on it and signed their name to it. Do you realize I still have that piece of paper? I can't find it right now, but I have it. <laughs> it's in my study somewhere, I know, because I would not throw anything like that away. So I will keep this. I got to put it somewhere so I can look at it. Okay, so thank you very much. Now, ready for a children's message? We're going to do it this different this morning, okay? We'll put that right there. Are you okay? We're going to do it this different this morning because I want to show you something. And I don't know if it's going to work. I tried it for preschool chapel, and it's like, ah, I don't know if this really worked too well, but we'll see if it works today, okay? So this morning, I have a little tray here, okay? What's that? Oh, that, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the second shelf. Okay, not the top shelf. The top shelf's the jar. See, the, see my jar? See my jar? I'll put that right there, okay? And I have for you, this is a thumbs up, right? It, 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 a thumbs up, right? This identifies us as making good choices, right? Right? Making the... In other words, doing things, having good, good works we do for God and for our church and for other people, right? So thumbs up, things we do right, like praying, like coming to church and worshiping, like reading our Bibles, right? Like serving our family members and our friends and people we don't even know. So thumbs up, right? Good things we do. So we see the good things we do. But you know what? I also have this sign. No, this is thumbs down. This, this stands for the times we don't do those things. The times we think about ourselves only. The times we are selfish. The times we are greedy. The times we don't think about anybody else but ourselves, okay? The times we are bad. So these are bad choices, okay? When we do something, when our parents ask us to do something, we refuse to do it, right? That's the way God looks at it. So 
bad choices, good choices, right? So as, as a person, since God created us, and I hate to say this, but when God created us, when we were born from our moms, were we making good choices or bad choices? Actually, actually bad choices. See my, see my arrow? It's supposed to be pointing this way. I got it mixed up. Here we go. I know. <laughs> you know, you think I'd have this, you think I'd have this down when I did it for preschool chapel, and I don't think it worked then, and I don't know if it's going to work now, but we'll, we'll find out. So the arrow's pointing towards bad choices, right? So how do we get it to point the other way? You're just going to tell me to flip over without touching any of it. Any of it. What? You've seen this before, Ellie. <laughs> okay. Just to remind you that we were all baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection. And because we're baptized, you know how God sees us? Does he see us as making bad choices or good choices? Okay. So if I pour the water in here without making too big of a mess... Now, I don't know if where you're sitting at, if you can see that or not. But the arrow is supposed to point that way. If you turn and look at it just right, it looks like that way. I picked a bad jar, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> the science behind this is, the science behind this is called refraction. It makes the light under, on, on the back side of the, the jar show the, the arrow going through the water, and it swaps it around so when you see it, the arrow now points towards the good, okay? But it's a reminder to us that when you're baptized, God's Spirit fills with inside of us. So when we do things, when God sees us, what does he see us? As thumbs down or thumbs up? Thumbs up, because that's exactly how God sees us, right? He loves us and cares for us because we've been baptized into Jesus' death and resurrection. Because Jesus loves us so much, he gives his son, he gives his life for us, and through his death and resurrection, he grants us forgiveness of our sins. And he calls us his children, right? And he loves us, and he always was with us, and always helps us to do and make the good, right choices because we're now right with him. Hey, let's all fold our hands. I want you to pray with me, okay? Repeat after me. Dear God, help us to always love you and serve you as we love others and serve others. As Jesus loves us and serves us. In his name we pray. Amen. Oh, you know what? Just because you're facing here doesn't mean you don't have to have this. Here you go. Let me come down here. Time for the treasure box, okay?
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ Jesus, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. We listen again to these select verses. For if we die with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he is not able to deny himself. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in 1999, John F. Kennedy Jr. flew a small plane from New York City to his family home in Massachusetts. He was a licensed pilot, but only a limited pilot at that, because he was only able to fly by sight 
and not by instruments. So when his flight was supposed to leave, it was delayed. It was delayed so late that it got dark on him. On board that plane was his wife Carolyn and her sister as they were headed to a wedding in Massachusetts. The plane took off and dark, but it never reached its destination. Instead, it crashed, and the cause for the crash was disorientation. Instead of finding somebody to fly him, he trusted himself, and he thought he could fly himself and his wife and sister-in-law to Massachusetts with any problem. He trusted himself, but that led to disaster for him and his own demise. Being disoriented over the waters of the Atlantic Ocean caused his fault, caused his death, and the death of two others. Because he trusted himself, because he did not wait, and because he did not want to ask anybody else for help. How many times is it in our life that we want to trust ourselves, that we want to trust nobody else, that we want to ask nobody else for help, not even our good and gracious God, because we think we have this thing under control. We think we have it under wraps. We think we have it handled because we've done it all this time. Yes, there may be different circumstances involved, but of course, I think I can do it. And that's many times our thoughts, even when it comes to spiritual matters. We think we can do it ourselves. We trust ourselves. And by trusting ourselves, the only thing we do is we deny our Creator. We deny our Redeemer, and we deny the one who makes us holy. So St. Paul reminds St. Timothy this morning to be true and to trust the one who created us, redeemed us, and sanctified us. He asks us to trust the one who died upon the cross and rose again. He asks us to trust his word, which is faithful and which is true. And in doing so, St. Paul gives Three examples or three illustrations really quickly in the epistle this morning. The first example is that of a soldier. He says we should share in the suffering of a soldier because the soldier does not do his own thing or her own thing. Instead, they do what is there to please the one who is over them. So we also suffer as soldiers. For we were bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. We were engaged in battle with the evil demon forces because we were baptized into life. And so now, from now on, we battle against this thing called death, the devil, our own sinful nature. So as a soldier in this world, we do suffer and sometimes suffer miserably. That leads us to the second illustration that Paul puts forth, and that is of an athlete, which was of a more positive illustration. Paul doesn't talk really much about competing here. Instead, he talks about the athlete following the rules and receiving a crown of victory. All athletes are crowned victorious as long as they follow the rules, as long as they don't do anything that is wrong. So it is with us that we are compared to athletes. We receive a crown of righteousness that God has in store for us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then the third illustration that Paul brings forth is that of a farmer. The farmer who plants his seed. The farmer who watches it grow. The farmer who harvests it and is able to enjoy the benefits of the earth's bounty. For what God has given him, 
the farmer receives and the farmer enjoys what has been granted to him. So it is with us. All the gifts, all the benefits that God has granted to us in this life, we are able to receive in joy, and we also are able to enjoy. Now, as I was putting this together, I noticed when I put these three illustrations, soldier, athlete, farmer. In English, the first letter spelled S-A-F. And wouldn't you know it, at the end of the text that Paul is talking about, he talks about eternal life. Because who do we trust in? If we trust in ourselves, we are not safe. If we trust in God, if we trust in Jesus, we are truly safe, safe for everlasting life, which he has granted to us in his son, Jesus Christ. It is at the end of our text that Paul ama amazingly quotes, most likely, a familiar hymn in his day and age. If we die with the Lord, we will also live with the Lord. If we endure, we will also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he is faithful because he is not able to deny himself. Numerous times we deny ourselves. We deny ourselves the safety. We deny ourselves the life that God has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Because we trust in anything but Jesus. But trust him in the one who died, in the one who rose again, in the one who's coming back for you and for me, the one who always stays with us completely and fully. We are truly safe. And God grants us the eternal life which he has preserved for us through his death and through his resurrection. For the times we don't trust anything but ourselves, and we deny being a follower of our God, God still even forgives us of that sin and grants us the ability and grants us the faith to trust him even more firmly and more honestly. For we are his children, safe as we trust him. And even when we don't trust him, he cannot deny himself and he calls us back to his fold, looking for us as lost brothers and sisters and bringing us back, holding us dear and near to him. In 1914, Ernest Shackleton led an expedition that had never been done before. The expedition was to cross Antarctica across the South Pole. He started out on this adventure with some men of his who are quite talented and quite gifted. But as it would be, tragedy struck. The ship that they were on got embarged with ice and the ship's name was Endurance. Endurance didn't endure because the whole of it fell into the ocean and the ship sank. It left the members of his crew stranded. But Ernest and a few others got onto a lifeboat, a 20-foot long lifeboat, and created a 800-mile journey across storms and large, large waves. 100-foot waves at that. But he got the 800-mile journey down. He found help and brought help back and rescued all of his men and brought them back safe and sound to England where they had began the journey. He was a hero because they thought and they realized that with him and his leadership that they were truly safe. For us, our leader is much better, much bigger, much grander, and holier, our leader Jesus, the one who lived our lives for us, 
the one who's been there in our place, but yet never sinned. Jesus, the one who was crucified upon that cross as God's sacrifice for us, who died there for us and grants us forgiveness, and we then die with him in our baptism. That as he was raised from the dead, we also live in newness of life. And in that newness of life, we trust him. Denying ourselves, trusting him for the life that he gives to us eternally. For we are truly safe in his hands, guided by him. In Jesus' name. Let us rise for prayer. We pray, gracious God, for all who have recently come to faith, protect each individual, guide new brothers and sisters in the church, wherever it is found, and lead young pastors like Timothy to proclaim your word confidently. Nurture them with your word and sacraments so that they grow in grace and knowledge of our Savior. Lord Jesus, be with all who labor to grow crops and transport food, build homes, and provide shelter and open local stores and provide clothing. Give them wisdom to meet the needs of the people around them and joy in their service. As Ruth accompanied Naomi to Bethlehem, so open the hearts of your people that they may become families of faith sharing your love. Loving Lord, we pray for those who struggle with long-term ills and sudden emergencies. We pray especially for those struggling and suffering from cancer. Carol, Doyle, Elrose, Eva, Mac, Kim, David, Sylvia, Cindy, and Nell. Bless also Brenda, Carolyn, and Lisa while they deal with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Grant your mercy upon Stephanie, Kathleen, and Patsy as they suffer from lung cancer. Give healing also to Robert, Kelly, Dylan, Lindley Joe, as they struggle with brain cancer. Bless with healing those battling breast cancer, Darlene, Bridget, Shirley, and Trish. Continue to be with Bennett with leukemia, Gloria and Daniel with bladder cancer, Sherry with bone cancer, Kenneth and Matt with liver cancer, and Alan dealing with pancreatic cancer. We also pray that you would give support and strength to our homebound parishioners, Dorothy, Shirley, Joyce, George, and Carrie. Bless them with your love and with your care. 
Gracious God, we pray for those with special needs. Donna still undergoing tests for an aneurysm. Sabrina, as she awaits upcoming surgery, be with those who are recovering from surgery. Al, Susie, Hilda, and Lisa. Continue to bless with your strength. Dolores, recovering from COVID. Zach, as he serves in the National Guard on the border. And Kyle, as he is deployed in Iraq. We pray for those who are suffering from serious health issues. Sandra, David, Greg, with lung disease. Barbara and Cynthia. Grant your love and healing to those recovering from strokes, Jennifer and Anita. Heavenly Father, we also pray for those who need your aid and care, Mary Ann, Lorraine, Geraldine, Kate, Ruby, Ophelia, Bob, Paulette, Sarah, Ashley, Ron, Justin, and Kimbra. Strengthen them in their faith and hear their prayers for help even as you healed the lepers. Be with first responders, emergency technicians, doctors and nurses, and all who use their gifts to relieve pain and restore health. Use us all with our various abilities to work for your common good. Lord our God, raise up leaders who seek peace across national borders and justice within them. Provide wisdom for trained out counselors and direction for friends and neighbors that they may calm troubled hearts, and ease strained nerves. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all of whom we pray. Trust in your word through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. 